welcome to my channel. My name is Anita and I am designer and maker behind yarns. In today's video I'll be showing you how to make daisy granny square. And even though I use mostly US stitch terminology, I'll mention UK terms as well. So for today's project we'll be using four different types of stitches. Single crochet, which is double crochet in UK terms, cluster stitch, half double crochet, UK half treble crochet, and double crochet, which would be UK treble crochet. So first thing we want to do when making a daisy granny square is a magic ring. Now you can make a magic ring any way you prefer, but I like using this technique when crocheting with thinner yarn, since it leaves me with a smaller circle. So I would wrap the yarn around my pointer finger two times, having the tail on the outer side. Then with my crochet hook I'll go under the first piece of the yarn and grab the second piece and pull it out twisting the hook just like that. And then I'll grab my working yarn and pull it through that loop on the hook. Now we can let go of everything and as you can see I have my magic ring ready. Now to start our daisy square we need to have 8 stitches total on our first round. And the first stitch that we are doing is single crochet or double crochet in UK terms. If you've never done a magic ring before and this is too fast for you, you can check my other video that should pop up on your right screen corner now where I explain it in more detail. So now I said that we need to have 8 stitches total for the first round, but I'm going to do 7 single crochets and then I'll connect this round in a way that will leave me with an extra stitch, which will be our 8th final stitch for this round. So the mat is actually very important when doing granny squares, because if you don't do a certain number of stitches required, on our final round you want to end up with a square. Ok, I have my 7 single crochets in the magic ring, and now I'll pull on that tail to close this big loop, just like so. And now I can cut my yarn and pull it out. Now what I want to do before connecting is pull that center tail through the middle of our last stitch. So I'll go through that last stitch and then into the loop under it. So this loop right here. Then take your center tail and pull it out. And I like to do this just to secure my tail here. And also since we are making this fake stitch at the connection, it will help us mimic a single crochet even when we look from the side. So the first stitch will have two loops here, just like the rest of our single crochets. And then we'll take this tail that we just pulled out and keep it out of our way. And this is our tail which we'll use to connect our row now. So I'll go into the very first single crochet we did, through both loops. Take my tail and pull it out. Now we'll go into that last stitch from the bottom and through the middle. So this stitch here. Take our tail and pull it through again. So now when we look from the top we have this nice looking stitch. And lastly, we'll take our tail and pull it back to the top, so that we can crochet over it as we go. So back to the middle of that fake stitch we did, grab the tail and pull it out. And this is our first round finished. We have all the stitches looking the same. And most importantly, we end up having 8 stitches all around. Now you can always do 8 single crochets and then connect with a slip stitch if this was too complicated, but I just really like how my finished first row looks like when I connect it this way. Now we'll start our next round and I'll change my color. We can go into any one of these stitches, but I actually like going through the stitch just before my connection, just so I can crochet over my tails as I go. So we go through both loops. 
and then I take my new color yarn and pull it through. So the next stitch we are doing is called a cluster stitch and we'll be doing four unfinished double crochets together into each stitch. This first stitch will be the only one that we'll do a bit differently and you can either chain two to start or what I like to do is take my tail and wrap around my hook just like that and then I'll yarn over and pull through these two loops and this will be my first stitch of the group and now we'll do what I referred to before as unfinished double crochet so we'll yarn over go into that same stitch grab the yarn and pull through now we'll yarn over and pull through two loops and we'll leave it at that. Now we'll do two more of these into the same stitch. So that will be four stitches total, counting that first stitch we did using our tail. And now that we have four loops on our hook and four stitches, counting that first stitch we did, we are going to finish off this first cluster stitch by yarning over and then we'll pull through all four loops. And then we will chain one to secure our loops in place and then chain one more to start the next stitch. So now to do our second cluster stitch we are going to go into the same stitch four times. So we'll yarn over first, go into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through two and we'll do this three more times until we have five loops on our hook this time. And as I said at the beginning, for all of our cluster stitches we have to have these four unfinished double crochets or five loops on our hook. So that can be your guide throughout. So you can either count your loops or the stitches inside your cluster stitch. And now we'll yarn over and pull through all five loops on our hook chain one and then chain another one and going into the next stitch we'll start crocheting over our tails the center tail I'll actually leave out and not crochet over it since this loop in the middle tends to open up as I go and pulling on the tail to close while it has been crocheted over will pull all your other stitches together and it won't look nice. So I would actually leave it out and then yarn over and go into that next stitch and repeat the same stitch four times into the same loop. Yarn over, pull through all the loops on your hook, chain one and chain two. So we did our three cluster stitches so far and we should have five more stitches left to do. So make sure you count your stitches 
since sometimes one of our stitches from the previous row can hide under the cluster stitch and make it very likely to miss it. So do count your stitches once you're done with the round, because if we miss one on our last round we won't get a square. So as you can see here I should have 5 stitches left to work into and I had this 5th stitch hiding here under my cluster stitch. So we'll work into that stitch as well. And as you can see I'm carrying these tails with me as I go. And as I said I'll work into the same stitch 4 times. Then once I have 5 loops on my hook, I'm going to yarn over and pull through all 5 loops and then chain 2. Now you can go ahead and finish this round, do 4 more cluster stitches and meet me back once you have 8 stitches total. Ok, I did all 8 cluster stitches for my round 2 and on my last stitch I chained 1 only. I'm going to cut my yarn now, pull that tail out and we'll do our connection just as we did for the first round. So we go into the first stitch, grab our tail and pull it out. Go under and through the middle of our last stitch and bring that tail through again. And then just hide that tail in the back. And you can see when you look from the top you have this seamless connection and this stitch will look just like any other we did around. Now we want to take our next color and do our last round where we'll make this circle into a square. So we'll go into any one of these gaps we have in between our cluster stitches and there will be 8 gaps total. So we'll go into this gap right here and take our new color and pull it through. And we'll do the same thing like we did when starting our cluster stitch. So just take that tail and wrap it around the hook just like so. Yarn over and pull through both loops. So to have this circle look like a square we'll be using two different types of stitches that have different height. And those are half double crochet which would be half treble crochet in UK term and double crochet or UK treble crochet. So what I've seen people usually do is they start their granny square from the corner where we have the tallest stitch which is double crochet for us and then work down to the lower stitch. But what I actually like doing is I would start with the half double crochet first and then when I finish my round I'll come back to this stitch and when I connect it here it won't be as noticeable as it would be if I had that connection on the corner. So since this will count as our first stitch, we'll do one more half double crochet into this same stitch. So now for every side of our square we'll be doing 3 stitches into each gap. Here we have 2 stitches but we will leave it at that. So when we complete our round we'll do our last stitch back into the same loop, which will also be our third stitch. And now I'll go on to the next gap and do my next stitch, which will be double crochet. And we have to do 3 of these together for this side. So this is 1 and as I said before each side will have 3 stitches together but in the corner we'll have 6 double crochets together. So first we'll do 3 double crochets, so this is 2 and this is 3. Now to go around this corner we have to chain 2.
and then we'll be doing three more double crochets in the same gap to start the second side of our square. And by doing so, you can see right away that corner forming. Now for the next gap, we'll be bringing our stitches down again. So we'll be doing three half double crochets together. And you can see I've been carrying all of my tails and crocheting over them as I went. Now we'll be doing our second corner. So again, we'll do three double crochets together into the same gap. And then chain two and work into the same gap three more double crochets. So now you can see we have our second corner completed as well as one side of our square. Now for the next gap we are doing three half double crochets together again. Then we'll do our third corner, so three double crochets. Chain two and do three more double crochets together into the same gap. Then we have our last set of three half double crochets together. And lastly, our fourth corner of three double crochets. Chain two and do three more double crochets in the same stitch. And as I said in the beginning, when we just started our round and left it at two stitches, we'll go around and back to this gap to do our last third stitch. So this is our last half double crochet. And we're almost done. Now we just need to finish off by connecting these two sides together. So I'll cut my yarn first and pull it out. Then I'll go into that first stitch and pull that tail out. Then from the bottom and through the middle of our last stitch, pull the tail out And then I'll just hide this tail in the back like so.
Now when we look from the top, you can't even notice where it was that we did our connection. And all of our sides will look the same. Okay, let's just quickly go over what we did today. So we did 7 single crochets into the magic ring. And then we connected in a way that we were left with an extra stitch. And then that left us with 8 stitches total on our first round. Then for the second round we did 8 cluster stitches. So for each cluster stitch we were doing 4 unfinished double crochets which we then connected together and chained 2 in between each stitch. And then we did our last round. So for each one of our 4 corners we did 6 double crochets. So we did 3 double crochets, chain 2 and then 3 more double crochets. Then we did half double crochet in between each corner. So 6 double crochets, 3 half double crochets. 6 double crochets, 3 half double crochets, 6 double crochets, and we finally finished the round with 1 half double crochet, since we started it with 2 stitches. And now the only thing we have to do is weave in our ends. And since I did crochet over most of my ends, what I like to do just to make sure they won't be coming out is with my tapestry needle I'll go in the opposite direction, but always grabbing one of those loops so that I actually don't pull that tail out completely. And I'll do this for each one of my tails that are out. Cut all the excess yarn and we are all done. Granny squares are so much fun to make since you can use them for pretty much any crochet project. You could do blankets, skirts, tops, bags and I'm already working on a tutorial for a summer hat using Daisy Granny Square. So make sure you subscribe and click on that bell button so you get notified when I upload new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video.